pastels. I tell you, what a joy it is to be with you. Uh, I've looked at the speaker lineup list, and this is like the kickoff of the political season, apparently. This is going to be speaker fest today, uh, and, uh, and so I'm going to be brief. But I do want to thank you for coming out today. This is so important. We have so much work to do, and uh, in just, what, 18 short months to get it done. Uh, when I think about what I should share with you today, it really breaks down into three things. Three things about Obamacare. It seems to be on the top of everybody's mind today. Number one thing is, it's clear the president knows this law is not going to work. It's clear. Think about it. He's delayed major portions of his own law, and he knows it's not going to work. He is delaying portions for big business, for unions, his special friends, special interest groups, and others. Number two, the law is clearly, if it's too dangerous for his friends, it's too dangerous for you. It's too dangerous for anyone. It's too dangerous for the American people. Which leads me to number three, the most important component. It is time to defund Obamacare. Are y'all there? We're at a point in time right now where we know the law is damaging the economy. It's hurting jobs. Job growth is slowed. Full-time jobs are going to part-time jobs. We have a new class of people now called 29ers. You've probably heard and met some. You might have experienced this yourself where your job hours are changing. Too much uncertainty in the economy in the marketplace. And uh, so my first bill when I was first elected in, in June of uh, 2010, it's been three years, was to defund Obamacare. Three years plowing this soil. And it was a few months ago that Senator Cruz reached out and said, hey, I want to be the Senate sponsor and join you in this effort. And so now as the House sponsor, I have 138 co-sponsors and Senator Ted Cruz in the Senate with Rubio and Mike Lee leading the charge. And we're finally getting some people's attention. And we have five weeks. Five weeks to go before it is implemented and the exchanges begin. We have, we have basically until the end of September to get this work done. So I've got to have you be there with me. We've got to let our voices be heard. And the message is real simple. Why on earth would we fund something a president himself doesn't even want to implement? Think about that. Why would we want to fund something we can't afford? Why would we want to fund something that is wrong for the American people, that's harmful for the American people? This is our chance to stop this train wreck. And so Floyd County, I want to know, are you ready to stop the train wreck? Are you ready? To stopping Obamacare. This is not about the president. This is about protecting the American people. This is about doing what's right and protecting liberty. So God bless you in your efforts to help us as we continue the fight. Only a few short weeks to go, but we're going to get it done. So Layla, thank you for letting me be a part of this. Thank you all for all you've done. God bless you. Rising star in Georgia politics. Some say he's already risen quite a bit. I heard that a minute ago. A product of Wren, Georgia. He's got a criminal justice degree from Georgia Southern. He's got a beautiful wife, Jennifer, if I remember correct. First vice chair of the Georgia State Republican Party. He enjoys running, he enjoys weightlifting. He enjoys being Democrats. Let me introduce you to Michael McNeely. Well, it is a pleasure to serve you as first vice chair of the Republican Party. Thank you for the opportunity. And I want to send I want to tell you that our chairman John Padgett's not here today, but he's in a in a very important place up in Boston at the RNC meeting, where we had to where they had to address the infomercials that CNN and NBC are deciding to run on Hillary Clinton. <laughs> so he'll be back here this afternoon and, and we'll be ready to move forward in our party for next year and beyond. I want to first acknowledge the, the Boy Scouts that are here. It's always good to see them here at this rally. Let's give the Boy Scouts a hand. And I focus on them because I am a proud Eagle Scout. Woo, yeah. 
Let me just share a few thoughts. And we've all, we've all heard the phrase that it takes a village to raise children. And that's so true. And when it relates to the Republican Party, it takes principled grassroots leaders to raise a party. And we've got to raise our party. We've got to return to the implementation of the principles that have made this country great and will make it great again. We have to go beyond our meetings on Saturdays and during the weekdays to go to communities that, that once voted for, for Republicans, those that we share values with. This is a center-right nation. And so we have an opportunity to go to all communities and say, listen, Look at the, the years that President Obama's been in office. Look at the, the principles that he's promoted and the legislation that's come from it. And how is that working for you and your families today? And if we do that effectively, we'll see a paradigm shift in how people vote. You know, there's a difference between a brand and a product. Candidate Obama in 2008 had a great brand. He talked about hope and change. And who doesn't believe in hope and change? But as he was elected, then we saw a product that did not work for America. The Republican Party, we've got some things we can adjust in our brand, but we've got the best product going. And it is proof in this great nation how it was founded on individual responsibility, the, the allowing individuals to build businesses and to prosper based on their God-given talents. And so we have an opportunity to not tweak our principles, but tweak our brand and go forward and let people see who we really are. We are black and white. We are Asian, Hispanic. We are male, we're female. We are those that might have $100 in the bank and those that have millions. We are all things to all people because of how we believe. We believe on a God who created us. We believe that freedom trumps anything else. Because we need to be free to make choices. And we won't always make the right ones, but we're free to do it. That's right. And if we get something wrong, we know how to correct it. So let's go forward both now and in the remainder of this year and next year doing great things. We've got nine new committees in our state party allowing more people to be involved in the party. A multicultural committee, a convention committee, because how many of you all knew how long that convention took place in Athens and how we need to prove that? <laughs> A community service committee, and so many more. And we're going to be rolling out a, an aggressive grassroots plan that invo involves voter registration and data development. So look for that. Thank you for the time today, and now it is my honor to introduce uh, one of our Republican elected officials. He's someone that has cut the red tape, allowing businesses to prosper here in Georgia. He's focused on voter education, making sure people know where to vote, how to vote, and what issues are on the ballot. He's battled against the Department of Justice to ensure that our voter rights were protected here in Georgia. But I think he would agree that the most important two attributes of his life is that he's a good, a good husband to his wife, Marty, and he's a good father to his three daughters. Please help me welcome Secretary of State Brian Kemp. I appreciate your leadership and John Padgett's at the party and uh, just appreciate everybody here at the local party for what you're doing to throw this event. My, my main goal here is to keep us on schedule so my remarks will be short. I want to tell you how privileged I am to be serving as your Secretary of State and I think one of the things that I have focused on in this office is fighting the federal government's intrusion into our elections processes. court ruling recently on the Voting Rights Act, which now we don't have to ask for permission to be able to do something, even if it's as simple as changing our voter registration form, or if Floyd County wants to move a precinct across the street. But let me tell you, you have my word that if Eric Holder and the Justice Department tries to come to Georgia like they're coming to Texas to try to get our state to opt in that I will fight that as hard as I've ever fought anything in my life. There, there's an equal protection clause in the Constitution, and we should all be created, be created or treated equal when it comes to elections and the states doing elections. And if they're not going to treat everybody equal, then we're going to continue to fight that. 
And I know my good friend who I'm now going to introduce uh, spends a lot of his time fighting the government as well, and he'll stand with us on that. Help me welcome Attorney General Sam Owens. Thank you, Brian. It's a pleasure to be here, and it's my honor to be your state's attorney, the state attorney general. And it's true, Brian and I are active in that voting space. Georgia was one of the states that was involved in that Supreme Court case where the Voting Rights Act Section 4 was thrown out. So what else are we doing? Well, the State Attorney General's Office, as you can imagine, is involved in a lot of litigation. We have five lawsuits against your friend, the Environmental Protection Agency. One of those rules, the cross-state air pollution rule, will be argued in the U.S. Supreme Court this fall. We also filed a recent suit in Oklahoma against the EPA because they tend to give records to liberal environmental groups for free and they tend to never give us FOIA requests at all, let alone for any costs, so we're in that suit. We're also one of 11 states that sued the administration over Dodd-Frank. Dodd-Frank is to the financial industry what Obamacare was to the healthcare industry. That gives the Secretary Treasurer 24 hours notice to take over a United States business in a closed court proceeding. There is no such law in our state that permits that type of handling outside the public's eye, and we're going to continue that lawsuit in D.C. in the D.C. Circuit Court. A couple other pieces of litigation we're involved in. Uh, you may remember when I chaired Pat County, I was sued for prayer before our commission meetings. Well, the town of Greece, New York, the town of Greece, New York, was sued for the same thing. Unfortunately, they lost their case in the district court and in the circuit court, the second circuit. It's now in the U.S. Supreme Court of the United States and Georgia's proud to have filed a brief in support of the city of Greece, New York, as they should have prayer too. Finally, I want to mention a case to you that you may not be familiar with. It's called Bond versus United States. This is a lady that sought to injure her neighbor. She actually had reason to injure her neighbor. Her husband apparently is the cause of the neighbor being pregnant. <laughs> Having said that, the United States Justice Department decided that state law enforcement shouldn't take over the case they should. And then went based on the International Chemical Treaty. That case is in the U.S. Supreme Court for the second time, which is unheard of. And the issue before the court is whether a treaty trumps our Constitution. And Georgia is pleased to be in that case on the side of the Constitution because it's the Constitution that covers us, not a treaty. As you can imagine, we're very involved in the numerous issues between the premium hikes, the navigators who have less training than census workers, and it's my pleasure to now introduce our Insurance Commissioner, Ralph Hudgens, who's leading that fight. Warm welcome for Ralph Hudgens. I'm going to begin, I guess, with a confession. I have a degree from the University of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> she said my time's up. <laughs> but I learned there that the first thing, first step in the scientific process was to identify the problem. The problem is Obamacare. Amen. We've got to now determine what we can do to solve that problem. Let me tell you what we're doing. Everything in our power to be an obstructionist. You, you probably... You probably have heard about the exchanges. Well, exchanges are coming to Georgia. Not The state is not setting them up. The federal government is going to set them up. But we have passed a law, and with the help of Senator McCoon and others, we have passed a law that says that a, a navigator, which is a position in that exchange, has to be licensed by our Department of Insurance. <laughs> the Obamacare law says that, that we cannot require them to be an insurance agent. So we said, fine. We'll just require them to be a licensed navigator. So we're going to make up the test, and uh, 
Basically, you take the insurance agent's test, you erase the name, you write navigator test on it. <laughs> so we have done that. The governor signed it. It's not House Bill 198. So we're going to protect. My job is to protect consumers in the state of Georgia. So we passed that law. Another, another law we passed um, was. The insurance companies come in, came in and they started talking about what's going to happen to insurance rates when all of the, the tenants of Obamacare go into force. They're going to go up tremendously. Um, the, the young folks can expect a 100% increase in health insurance, individual health policies, the medium age, anywhere from 50 to 100. Everybody, the older folks, 20 to 40%. So we. I didn't want to get blamed for these increases, and so we passed a law that says that uh, that every insurance company, when they send their bill out in January, they have to put a notice in there that says these increases are not due to any action by Georgia's governor, Georgia's General Assembly, or Georgia's Department of Insurance. The increases are so solely due to Obamacare. He's proud of it. Let him take the credit. Thank you. God bless you. It's my privilege now to introduce uh, our, our Commissioner of Labor, Mark Butler. He is, uh, since he gave me a parking place in his building so I can park there at night, he's even a better guy than he was before. But, uh, let me introduce a guy that's doing a great job as your Commissioner of Labor, Commissioner Mark Butler. You like the guy that's parking privileges from up there. <laughs> well, i tell you what, it's good to be here, and I'm going to talk as quickly as I possibly can tell you about some things. I, my job here today is to get you fired up. Because we need you. You're our army. There's a lot of things going on in the federal government you need to know about. You know, one of my favorite questions I get asked by the press all the time is, you know, why are, are the job creation moving so slowly? Which I just kind of giggle and go, oh, thanks for sending me that one. I said, first of all, let's start with one of my favorite quotes from Ronald Reagan. Is, he goes, most dangerous words in the English language are, hi, I'm from the government, I'm here to help you. I can tell you what, they are not here to help you from the federal government. Let me tell you some real quick stories to show you how it's affecting the job growth here in Georgia. Just here recently, I was with a small business, a small textile business. Yes, we still have textile business in Georgia. Up in North Georgia, this man used to be the second largest employer in his county. He has had to turn down contracts here lately. He wants to hire 50 to 60 more employees to put him over 100 employees to put people back to work in an area who really need jobs. He told me flat out because he's in the textile industry, he cannot afford to do that because of how he's going to be hit with Obamacare. It's going to cost him a quarter of a million dollars in Obamacare. He goes, it will put me out of business. He goes, why is the government doing this to me when the people I'm competing with in China don't have the same problems? That's wrong. Another uh, business down in uh, Savannah had called and said, we need some more workers. We just got a big contract. We want to hire 100 workers. Then they got to looking at Obamacare and figured out they couldn't afford it either. When we went to go see him again, he goes, I'm sorry, we can't hire those 100. We ended up contracting those jobs out to Mexico. How does that help put jobs out there for Georgians? It does not. And oh, by the way, it's not just Obamacare, folks. Immigration, immigration and customs. Let me tell you what they're doing to have to be immigration problem. I got a good friend that owns a small business down in South Georgia, big employer down there has 260 to 300 employees. They came in there and they audited his I-9 forms to make sure that he was you know, sticking to the law. Let me tell you what, they came in there with his I-9 forms. They found some clerical errors, things like maybe not quite having the signature exactly in the right place. Literally, crossing T's and dotting I's. He did not hire one illegal person. Everybody there was perfectly legal. They fined him $90,000. That's four or five jobs in that community that just evaporated. Farmers are being hit left and right by the U.S. Department of Labor. So much that I want to change the name of my department because I'm tired of going down there and the first thing they ask me is, are you from the Fed or are you from Georgia? And after I tell them from Georgia, they put their shotguns down. 
<laughs> I've seen a fine farmer. That one farmer in particular, they hit him, they came in and looked at his bus. Had a cracked tail light, low tread on the tires, had a little rust on his uh, muffler. He fixed them all before the guy left, and they still find him $3,600. None of these people did anything to harm one single individual, but they treated them like criminals. You want to know how come we're not creating jobs? The federal government's the reason why we're not creating jobs. Matter of fact, I think we need to change Ronald Reagan's old uh, saying, with all due respect, it needs to be high. I'm from the federal government, and I'm here to find you. <laughs> Each and every one of you, we have a very important race. We have a Senate race. We've got a lot of good people running for it. You need to get behind your folks. We need to get somebody in there. When we choose the person, make sure we send them to Washington. We can't afford to send any more Democrats up there. We are at war. We need to make sure that we change the way things are being done in Washington so we can put Georgians back to work. Thank you. to introduce to you the one person in our statewide constitutional officers, which we all got together and voted, the man with the best hair, <laughs> State School Superintendent John Bard. <laughs> he told me I was in trouble. Uh, it's an honor to be with uh, my hometown folks. Uh, and, uh, one, one thing real quick. We have any educators here. If you're an educator, stand up, please, just for a minute. Thank you guys very much. Um, I want to honor you. Um, you know, public edu uh, education takes a good beating many times. Let me tell you the good news and what's happened in the last couple years since uh, we've been uh, in office. Uh, in 2012, Georgia was the only state in the entire nation where student achievement increased on every national test that's administered in every state in the country. We're talking about the ACT, the SAT, advanced placement exams, and the National Assessment of Educational Progress in 4th and 8th grade math, 4th and 8th grade reading, and 8th grade science. Now, you probably hadn't heard in the newspapers that uh, our students in Georgia rank 12th in the nation in advanced placement exams. In other words, our students who are passing college level courses, college level exams, and earning college credit while they are still in high school. The national SAT average in 2012 declined two points. Georgia's went up seven. Now, why do I want to honor our teachers? because they're getting tremendous results in face of the most difficult economic times we've ever experienced in education. We have two-thirds of our school districts in this state that are in school less than 180 days a year, which is the state minimum. When you look at the countries that people like to compare us to and say, well, how, how do you compare with these countries? They're in school 220 days. Just to the north of us in Chattooga County, they're in school this year 144 days a year because they can't afford to keep their doors open. Just in Floyd County, we laid off 120 teachers this school year. We have larger class sizes, longer school days, shortened calendars. In spite of all of that, we've rolled out a new accountability system for our school districts that gives them numerical grades instead of a pass-fail AYP. We've rolled out a new teacher and leader evaluation system that is not just a satisfactory, unsatisfactory with no feedback. Teachers aren't afraid of accountability, but they want to be held accountable for what they do, not just a pass-fail system. They want feedback on how do we improve. We rolled out more rigorous standards, and we actually turned away the National Common Assessment, which would have locked us into uh, curriculum standards determined by the federal government. So I want to thank you teachers for what you do. Uh, you do tremendous work, uh, and I want to honor you for that. Um, I'm not going to use all my time. I, at this time, I'm going to introduce to you one of our own local uh, senators. Uh, he's actually the only politician that I know of that can put you to sleep without a speech. <laughs> and that's Chuck Huckstabler, and 
he can put you to sleep because he is an anesthesiologist. <laughs> so, being here. I especially want to thank you for electing me to the new open Senate District 52 seat last year. An important seat because for the first time in the history of Georgia, we have a Republican supermajority by one vote in the state Senate and it's paying off dividends already. We have uh, a great group there. We are seeing growth in this state in spite of Obama. We've seen uh, actually two months this year that are the highest revenue months for the state of Georgia since 2007. If anybody can remember back, that's when we had a Republican president. So we're, we're making great gains there. We've um, sponsored, and Senator McCoon over here, and I saw Senator Loudermilk have co-sponsored. Uh, we're, we're trying to get an amendment on the uh, ballot for November of next year, a constitutional amendment that would gradually um, eliminate the state income tax in this state. We've seen the <laughs> The data clearly shows that those states without an income tax have significant growth over those states with high income tax. As a matter of fact, it's 11 years sooner that the economy doubles in those states. And uh, we hope that to be on the ballot at that time. I want to take a little bit of my time and, and thank the Tillman family, Earl and Carol, and especially um, Earl for having us here. Back in 1998, when I was elected to the first Republican Floyd County Commission, Earl was there right beside me. Uh, for a guy that as a kid spent time in uh, South Georgia peanut fields, he's done pretty well for himself. He's a uh, president, been a CEO, a writer, humorist, lieutenant colonel, um, got the Wright Brothers Award, uh, which is the highest award the FAA gives. Of course, he knew the Wright Brothers and had a little bit of an insight. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the, the Tillman family is, is, is really important to this area. Several of us participated in the Gary Tillman Clock Tower 5K run this morning, named after his late son. And to clarify, participate, Representative Dempsey and I watched Representative Lumsden run the race. <laughs> And, and cheered him on all the way. Uh, but we, we uh, certainly thank them for all they've done for this community. And then lastly, um, our outgoing uh, Republican Party Chairman, Dan Hanks, who I saw earlier, the House had done a resolution for him and the Senate had two, uh, Senator Loudermilk and, and myself co-sponsored it. We saved it actually for this time. And... Uh, unanimously recognizing the work he had done. Even all the Democrats voted for him when they found out it was Dan Hanks because they knew he was such a great guy. So if, if Dan's here, we'll present this to him at this point. And um, if, if he's gone around the corner, we'll catch him later. And I do want to introduce to you as well um, Representative Dempsey, our senior member in seniority, I always have to say, not in age, but in seniority, <laughs> of our delegation uh, on the important appropriations committee and was there on the city commission fighting for the citizens when I was on the county commission here. And it's my privilege to introduce her to you at this time. Thank you. Well, good afternoon and welcome to House District 13. It's so good to have all of you here. I really do appreciate the fact that you paused in your busy day. Saturday right and it's kind of nice outside not sunny but a little bit temperate which is a great change in the weather for us here so thank you for making this important I appreciate the conviction of each of your hearts before I start to talk just a little bit and it will be brief I want to share a message with you that came from the speaker of the house dear friends I would like to extend warm greetings to all those gathered here today for this opportunity to fellowship and hear from elected officials and candidates for office. Unfortunately, I am unable to attend today's event, but I know it will be a great one, as it is every year. As Speaker of the House, I want to thank you for your hard work and dedication to the Republican Party. Our ability to govern depends on your efforts to elect people to office 
like the one standing before you today, not one, that was one, so I'm not talking just about me, um, standing before you today who are conservative, trustworthy, and focused on creating jobs for all of Georgia. Northwest Georgia has outstanding leadership in the Georgia House of Representatives, and I count all of them as my friends, and I know you do too. Once again, I wish you well today and hope to have the opportunity to visit with you in the future. Very truly yours, David Ralston. I know he is very sorry that he could not be with us today. I want to thank the home team for today. My goodness, the Floyd Republican Party. What great work y'all have done. Layla's their leader, but a huge team effort went into this day and then also into reaching out to get the candidates that are here today that are going to be so vital to the, the conversation that we're about to have and the decisions that are going to be made throughout Georgia. I want to thank the Republican women, the Floyd County Young Republicans. What great, great people each of you are, and I appreciate the places and the times that you step out to stand up, because that's what really matters. The scouts and all the volunteers that are here, and as I said earlier, each of you for, for showing up today, for being here, for being a part of this conversation that matters so very much. The Tillmans, I know we're all going to want to thank them so much, but Earl, another thing Earl did that I want to share with you is he blazed the trail so that I could serve today. He ran for this house seat and he began to break down the barriers and let it be known that you could live in Floyd County and vote for Republicans in Atlanta. So it was great. I thank you every day, Earl, for that, for your friendship and your encouragement to each and every person here. But now I've got something I want to share with you, and I'm going to back up Commissioner Butler a little bit on what he said. We have just a little bit of fun here. I want each of you to put the hand up that you would catch a ball with. If it's your right hand, it's my right hand, but if it's your left hand, put it up. If it's you need both, because I'm getting ready to throw something at you, okay? And I want you to catch it, so keep that hand up. Just a minute. Get ready. Now catch this. We need you. Catch it. Catch it. Get it good in your hand. Don't put it deep in a pocket. Put it close to your heart. Put it close there where you can continue to resonate that message. We are nothing without you. Those of us who want to serve in elected service cannot do it if we do not listen to you, if you do not share your message, your heart, your voice, your concerns with us. So I want to encourage you to continue to do that, to continue to help us to serve with integrity, with honesty, with 100% honesty, 100% of the time, with principled commitment. You matter, and we cannot do it without you. I'm well aware of the challenges that we all face in our homes, in our schools, in our jobs, and in our families. Georgia's been going through a hard time, but you know what? Thanks to the commitment of our governor, we are moving forward, and we're taking some great steps and making some great strides. And much of that is because of your commitment and your voice and how we're all working together. So here's what I want to ask you to do. You got that on you now. It's close to your heart. I want you to remember that you and I and everyone here, we have a shared commitment, a shared responsibility to move forward and hold all of those who serve and all of those who share information with us to give us 100% honesty, 100% of the time to serve with integrity and to help us to do the very best job we can do together. For one, we'll take us nowhere, but all of us together will make sure that conservative Republican voices stand strong and tall in our community, in our state, and in our nation. May God bless each and every one of you, and I thank you for being here today. Before I step away, I'm going to take a moment to introduce a good friend of mine. He's our neighbor. He's not that far away, you know. Bartow County is very near, but he actually has a good portion of Floyd County, and it has been a privilege to work and serve with Christian Coomer, as it has been to serve for the first time in a 100% Republican delegation from Floyd. This, thank y'all for sending everybody that you did this year. Eddie and Chuck joined us there, and we can all work together for what you ask us to do. Christian serves on great committees. He's a wonderful, committed family man and a true, honest public servant. He is our strong voice, though, now in the governor's office as he serves. It is an honor to serve as one of the three floor leaders for the House of Representatives. I bring to you my good friend, Christian Coomer. Good afternoon, everybody. 
I'm glad to be here today. I notice that we are uh, significantly ahead of schedule, so I'm going to take a few minutes and get us back on schedule. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Listen, it really is an honor to be here again on this stage. Um, my parents taught me to be grateful and to say thank you when it was appropriate. And every time I get to speak to a group of Floyd County Republicans, I have to say thank you because four years ago when I ran for the State House for the first time, uh, you took a chance on me. You didn't know me, but you, Floyd County GOP, uh, put me over the top and elected me to serve in the State House of Representatives. And I'm very grateful for that most days. And, uh, I, but I'm sincerely uh, grateful for the opportunity to serve you and represent you there. Um, as Katie mentioned, Governor Nathan Deal also has given me an opportunity to serve as an administration floor leader in the House of Representatives. And Governor Deal uh, sends his regards today, and he asked me to pass on uh, his regrets for not being here today. He's actually campaigning for other Republican candidates in Georgia right now, helping us expand our GOP majority in the legislature, uh, attending fundraisers for other candidates this morning. And he'll be packing up uh, and getting ready to leave the country uh, for an economic development tour in Asia uh, in the coming week. And on that note, I would tell you that, that uh, we have seen uh, significant job growth, significant economic development and improvement in Georgia under Governor Deal's leadership. And that doesn't happen just by chance. We know it happens through leadership. Uh, and we know that because if you look at the numbers for Georgia compared to other states, we're leading the pack in job development in the private sector <laughs> leading the pack in new investment and economic growth. Since Governor Deal took office in 2011, uh, we've seen more than 940 businesses relocate or expand, uh, including $13.7 billion in investment in Georgia, almost 72,000 jobs created in Georgia, uh, including uh, recently right over in Whitfield County, 2,400 jobs and $450 million invested in engineered floors business there. Now, we've had a long, a long span of job growth and a decrease in the unemployment numbers. Some of you may have read this week that there was a, an uptick in the unemployment numbers, but there's something behind that uptick you should know. And that is, it's the private sector that is growing, but at the same time, public sector jobs have been decreasing in Georgia. The size of the state workforce is lower than it's been in 15 years. And it's because we've had a downsizing of state government in response to economic, uh, economic trouble. We've cut state government budget and not raised taxes in order to balance our budget year after year. And that's the kind of leadership we have through Governor Deal and through the Republican majorities in the House and the Senate right now. At the time we've cut state agency spending year over year, we have not cut education, public safety, or human service agencies in their budgets. Because of the leadership we have, the conservative leadership we have in Atlanta right now, we've been able to maintain our AAA bond rating in the state of Georgia, one of only eight states in the nation that can say that, which means that your tax burden in Georgia is still lower than any other state tax burden anywhere in the United States. And that's according, uh, that's according to a study by the Tax Foundation that found that Georgia has the lowest per capita tax burden. So without raising taxes in the last four years, we balance the budget every year. And we've had a few other conservative victories. Let me tell you about a couple of them. First of all, an issue that is of primary importance to me and many of you, we've made Georgia a safer place for the unborn. We've done that by making it illegal to have an abortion in the state of Georgia, an elective abortion, after 20 weeks of gestation, making it one of the strongest pro-life states in the country. Governor Deal's leadership and legislative leadership, we were able to eliminate, for the first time, uh, state health insurance coverage for elective abortions. That means your state tax dollars will not be paying for abortions going forward. We've enacted legislation that makes it easier for veterans and military families to get jobs in skilled trade industries in Georgia, a job sector that's going to have more than 60,000 vacancies in the next six years. And that move not only benefits us in a skilled labor force, but also keeps Georgia ahead of the pack in the next round of base realignment and closures that are coming. It helps us to maintain 
the $21 billion economic impact that military veterans and installations have on this economy. Finally, through Republican leadership in the State House, the Senate, and in the Governor's Office, we've expanded educational opportunities for Georgians. We preserve the HOPE program for university students and for trade school, tech technical college students, and for a generation to come. And we've expanded by giving families and communities educational choice. We gave voters the option on what they wanted to do with regard to local education choices. So now, other communities that have not had the benefit of a charter system like Floyd County will have the opportunity to do that as directed by the families in those communities. So we've accomplished a lot, but we've got a lot still to do. We have to defend the people and the state of Georgia from those on the left who would like to further ameliorate our liberties, our freedoms, our foundational concepts. Our governor has the experience, the integrity, the intellectual ability to make that happen. And your Floyd County delegation also has the medal to keep that going. Let me introduce to you our next speaker, who is our newest member of the delegation, Representative Eddie Lumsden. Representative Lumsden uh, is a hard worker. He is a fighter. He's a fellow veteran, Air Force veteran. And I'm proud to serve with him. He's come in with the experience to be wise in his decisions and to look around, listen, and take note of what's going on, not to jump into uh, fights that don't make sense, but to wait and save his influence to help Floyd County and his, and his uh, constituents in the best way possible at the right time. I'm proud to serve with Representative Dempsey and also with Representative Lumsden and the State House of Representatives. Please welcome Eddie Lumsden. I guess there's some advantages and disadvantages to being the uh, youngest uh, member of the delegation, also to uh, being uh, last in a sequential order uh, to speak, because all the previous speakers uh, generally took away the comments that I was about to make. <laughs> so um, uh, that puts me into a, a, a little bit of a, a situation. But um, uh, looking out here, I just, uh, I'm so thankful to uh, have the opportunity to appear uh, before you today to speak with you as I look out uh, on this crowd. Uh, I'm really uh, encouraged. Uh, many of you are familiar with the fact that this is the ninth year that we've had this event, but uh, going back about 10 years, it was just uh, something that we were uh, uh, talking about. And one of the challenges that uh, we faced in that process was, well, where could we have an event that would, primarily we were looking at it as being a county-wide event. At that time, I served on the executive committee. Keith Howell was uh, chairman at the time, and uh, after uh, he uh, uh, stepped down the next year, I became chairman. And uh, this, this event that we've been talking about, we were, we're really uh, struggling to try to figure out how to uh, uh, put it together, and primarily where we could have it. And uh, I have recall that uh, Mr. Earl Tillman had um, uh, made the offer once upon a time to uh, let me uh, have a little event here as a fundraiser. And I thought, well, if it will work for a fundraiser, maybe it's uh, large enough to uh, serve for an event of this type. But um, uh, fellow uh, executive committee members had a little bit of a consternation about a, um, a hot hanger in the uh, middle of the summer as being a good location to hold an event of this type. But uh, we put it all together. We tried it for the first year. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tillman graciously, graciously offered the, the use of his facility. And I just want to thank you. Mr. Earl, stand up, please. Just, just let's give Mr. Earl. been uh, just, just a strong supporter of, uh, uh, of events of this type and, and been so gracious to let us uh, use the facility for uh, all of these years now. And as I look out on the crowd, uh, we've just grown every year. We've had uh, great speakers. We've had our, our governor, lieutenant governor. Uh, every year we've, we've had a, a whole slate of uh, statewide candidates. Uh, and and as, as we have grown as a party, we uh, now have all of our state elected uh, officers. This is not just a county event. It's not just a district event. It's really a statewide event. And we're just uh, so uh, proud and so pleased to have all of you here today. And uh, I'm not going to take up a lot of time uh, simply because I know we have a lot of candidates that uh, these are the ones that we want to hear from. We're facing a lot of problems in our nation today. There's, there's uh, Some have already been highlighted here. And it's really imperative that we uh, put 
uh, our uh, best candidates forward. Uh, we have a slate of great candidates. All of them bring uh, a lot of credibility and a lot of experience to the table. And uh, I want you to uh, hear from them. But uh, we just, I just need to encourage you that at this uh, critical juncture in time, we come together, we get behind our candidates, and we to try to take this nation back. So thank you so much for your attention, for your time, and uh, you're going to take the next uh, introduction. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. A tradition, I guess, about three years ago, that we would start um, inviting all of our auxiliary um, organizations and the state chairs. And uh, I think it's a good thing that we know that we have a, a state women's organization and um, another organization I'm proud of, the state young Republicans and the college Republicans as well. So uh, the first speaker in the auxiliaries is going to be Rose Wing. She's the chair of the uh, Georgia Federation of Republican Women. And what a great crowd. This is huge. And seeing it, it certainly is a great day to be a Republican in Floyd County. And all of y'all need to give yourselves a hand right now. Yeah. And I want to thank you for inviting me here today. Floyd County is a great Republican county here. Uh, you have a wonderful chairman with Layla Shepman. You do a great job. Uh, there's a wonderful uh, Republican Women's Club, Floyd County Republican Women's Club, led by Elaine Watson, who has, has been great to the Georgia Federation of Republican Women. You also have a wonderful congressman, Tom Grace, and he is truly a shining star and a rising star for, for Georgia and, and for America itself. Uh, the energy level here today is super. And it's wonderful, but you know something, we got to take it beyond today. I recall that that horrible Wednesday in November last year, and we all kind of wondered what happened. You know, we thought we were going to win this one. Well, you want to know something? We learned. And we learned that we need to work together. We need to work together not only as the Republican Party, but the young Republicans. Uh, group and the women's group and the, uh, the Georgia Black Republican Council and Tea Party. We all need to work together because we're all the Republicans. And you know, as we begin to look at each of our events as the election season comes along, we need to look at each other and work with each other and check with each other. We all need to be having a Young Republicans event going on when there's a Black Republicans event going on or a Tea Party event going on. We need to learn to communicate together. So we are helping each other to make ourselves successful in 2014 and 2016. The other thing we learn, and we're going, I noticed that we're working hard toward, is that we got to embrace. We got to embrace the young Republicans, and the black Republicans, and Asian Republicans, and the Hispanic Republicans. Because if we don't, we will win. But if we embrace, we will win in 2014 and 2016. And how do we work together and how do we embrace each other? It's through communication. And we got to learn to use that social media. And that is, if you don't have a website in your group, get one. If you don't have Facebook, get one. And if you don't know how to get one up and go and contact your state GOP, feel free to contact myself. We got some great ones over in the Georgia Federation will help you develop a Facebook and a website. We need to get that message out for the Republican Party, the principles of limited government, individual responsibility, a strong national defense, and free enterprise. Because anyone, that any individual, once they hear about it, no matter what their race, creed, or color, would believe in those principles. And we got to get it out there. And it has been my honor and privilege to root and to work with many of the groups, including the Georgia Black Republican Council, college Republicans, and the young Republicans. But the next person I am getting ready to introduce is Megan Hansen. Megan's not only a friend of mine, but someone I proudly stated not too long ago, I consider her a mentor. She is energy, 
She's not only the future of the Republican Party, she is the Republican Party today, right now. She went to Alabama, maybe one of the faults, that she, this is one fault that she may have, she did go to Alabama. However, she has, she's in her second term as chair of the Young Republicans. She was previously treasurer of the Young Republicans. She is a leader in the Republican Party and a leader with the Young Republicans. She spoke at the National Federation of Republican Women Southeastern Conference a few weeks ago representing Young Republicans. And next weekend she's going to South Carolina to a conference for Palladian View to represent Young Republicans. It's my honor and privilege to introduce Megan Hanson. Um, I just wanted to thank you to send a thank you to the Floyd County GOP, particularly my national, uh, my former, excuse me, former National Committee woman, Ms. Layla Shipman. She's also the uh, Georgia Young Republican Woman of the Year for 2012. And then also have another board member right here, Senator Josh McCoon, is my National Committee man. And both of them off, um, have done a great job, and um, I'm sure Layla will lead you on to uh, victory as well. Last year I spoke and I talked to you about how um, the young Republicans were going to do great things and we needed you all to have faith in us. I talked to you about how we were not the future of the party, but we are the now. So let me tell you a few things that the young Republicans did that you can be proud of last um, election cycle. We ousted Democrat incumbents in, from the House and Senate, including right here in Floyd County. We went out door to door for... Um, Representative um, Lumsden and to um, other county events to work for him. And now you, like you heard um, Katie say, that you have a full-fledged Republican um, delegation right here from Floyd County. That's awesome. That Congratulations to you. I know you all worked hard to do that as well. But the young Republicans, overall, we went across the state from Columbus to Augusta, Savannah to Atlanta, and right here in Rome. And we made over 50,000 voter contacts. 50,000. That's awesome for us, I think. We went door to door, we made phone calls, we worked booths at county fairs, we delivered and placed yard signs. We worked hard last election cycle. We also had our first annual GYR Grassroots Day at the Gold Dome <laughs> event, where we invited our young Republicans from across the state and our officials, our elected officials, representatives, senators, we had uh, Ryan Kemp there and Sam Owens stopped by as well. We invited them all and we got to mix and mingle with our elected officials. That is key to holding them responsible. Those personal relationships are key. So we have done great things and we're looking forward to move forward. And we're, one of the things I'm, I'm really focusing on this year is growing clubs. We've had two new clubs chartered this year. We are one of the top five states, state federations, in the YRNF. We have over 550 members. That's awesome too, but it's not enough. And we're not stopping there. But we need your help. We need your help recruiting members. We need your help recruiting people between the ages of 18 and 40 to join us. And then we'll take it from there and educate them about why this is so important. The peer-to-peer -peer connection is what will be key, but we need your help. So, that being said, I want to uh, introduce the person who has been an ally of mine, and that is the chairman of the Georgia Young Republicans, Will Kramer. He is originally a Texan, but we won't hold it against him. And um, I just wanted to welcome him to the stage. Hey you guys, my name is Will Kramer. Um, I'm the chairman of the Georgia Association of College Republicans. And um, you know, we, we are comprised of thousands of college students from all over the state, including uh, one here in uh, Rome uh, at Barry College. We have the uh, Barry CRs, they're very active. And uh, the chairwoman is one of my favorite CRs in the state. But anyways, um, you know, I'm here to talk to you guys a little bit about the CRs and what all we do. Um, in 2012, we campaigned very hard for Governor Romney. 
Uh, we took two trips to Virginia and two trips to Florida, uh, two very crucial swing states, um, to campaign. We knocked on over 30,000 doors and we made over 10,000 phone calls in just four weekends for Governor Romney. Um, we took 60 college students uh, actually to one of, our, uh, one of our Virginia trips. Collectively, we traveled over 36,000 miles. We pride ourselves on being the ground troops for the Georgia Republican Party and for the Republican Party um, nationally. We work very hard to try to recruit college students um, to go door to door, to get out the, um, the Democrats who we need to unseat and to promote Republicans that we need to win. Um, and this year isn't going to be any different. 2014 will not be different than 2012 at all for us. We're going to get out there and we're going to campaign and we're going to make sure that we are victorious in the state of Georgia. You know, one of the things that we are focusing on this year since it's a primary season, the college Republicans as a whole can't endorse any candidate. Um, but we are working on growing our chapters to get more college Republicans out there to campaign. And we're encouraging the college Republicans that we do have to get out there and campaign and volunteer for their favorite candidate across the state. Um, last year, as uh, Megan said, that the Young Republicans did, the Georgia Association of College Republicans also hosted a uh, Georgia CR's Under the Dome event. And we invited all the elected officials, and I believe uh, Senator Josh McCoon came out to that as well, and we got to meet a lot of elected officials and tell them our concerns as college students, and they listened to us, and hopefully we'll see progress. But, you know, I'm going to echo what Megan said. You know, it's a great way to keep our, um, our elected officials accountable to us and to college students. You know, in fact, one statistic I like to throw out there to everybody, if you took the college students that voted for Barack Obama and applied them to Governor Romney, we would have a President Romney right now instead of the second term President Obama. The youth vote is crucial and we need it as a party to, to be victorious. And uh, we can't do it alone. We operate, you know, we're college students, you know, I mean, we can get out there and we can work and we can campaign, but we can't do it alone. We need the support of, you know, people like Layla Shipman the, um, and the Florida GOP who come out there and they help the college Republicans whenever they can, they mentor us, they give us advice. And that's what, we, that's what we hope to get from you guys. Um, so we uh, just launched a brand new website, www.georgiacrs.org, and I welcome you to visit that website. Um, and uh, please visit it, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. And if you have any kids that are in college and they're interested in char starting a chapter, let me know. I'm more than happy to get them involved. So uh, thank you guys, and well, thank you, Layla, for inviting me to come speak. Um, I'm going to just kind of go over the rules of, uh, actually I want to call all the um, senatorial candidates up, if you could just line up in the front right here. Uh, I'm going to go over how this is going to, the rules for the um, talk. I wrote them down so that we wouldn't forget. Each candidate will be chosen in a random order. I have a hat with, um, with a set of numbers one through seven in it. Uh, each candidate will have five minutes to speak. You'll get a one-minute warning from the young lady in the front, which, let's give her a round of applause. Yeah, this is my daughter, Rosa. She's been, uh, she's been keeping time at this event, I think, since she was nine, and she's 16 now. So I thought it was maybe the last year. It doesn't look as cute as a 16-year-old holding up a one-minute sign as it did a nine-year-old. Um, but she'll hold up a sign, one minute, 30 seconds, and then a stop sign. Once you get the stop sign, I will come to the stage and cane you all, grab a cane and pull you off, okay? After we are done with this, um, I'll, after all seven of you guys speak, um, we will then announce the winner of the, the uh, results from the straw poll. After we get you guys in order, uh, we're gonna put you back over in the chairs in the order in which you'll speak, and at that time, um, Mayor Pennington will come up and speak as the gubernatorial candidate. So um, that way, if everything is fair, we all understand how this is gonna work, correct? Everybody goes alphabetical. We thought we would just give this a little, uh, a little change. All right. Um, let's first. The one. <laughs> Mutt says U.S. Senator, so... <laughs> <laughs> he was number one. He was number one. Okay, and then who's two? Karen. And then two, three, four, five, six, and then four. 